Death and Taxes, released by indie developer Placeholder Gameworks earlier this year, is a game that takes its title rather seriously. You play the role of a far less Mexican iteration of the Grim Reaper, in what mostly amounts to a lot of gameplay revolving around micromanaging the soon-to-be-departed souls of Cosmopolis City. As I've already touched on, this game gets a lot of comparisons thrown its way. Papers, Please, Reigns, Beholder, you get the idea. And yeah, fine, I see where they're coming from. The similarities are there, but what I really wish people were yelling about is instead a few other things. Like how wonderful the art direction is, or the soundtrack, which is often a joy to listen to, or the voice acting. My god, the voice acting. We'll get into that later. For the sake of spoilers, which are pretty easy to stumble into considering how story-driven the actual gameplay is, I'm going to be covering the minimal basics just before getting into anything else. I'll let you know when the floor starts becoming lava and the spoilers start rolling in. So, after you're brought into existence by Fate, your dapper looking boss and creator, you are sent downstairs to become equated with your office space. This is your desk. These are your instructions for the day. These are your profile sheets that require marking. This is your marker of death. And this is your phone. Welcome to Death and Taxes. The majority of your time will be spent marking profile cards live or die, whilst contending with a number of subtle background plots that will eventually become more and more apparent as you go on. On the surface, the gameplay feels simple enough, adhered to the instructions that have been provided, nice and simple. Once the day is completed, Fate will offer a daily report on your conduct, but this is your first day, so things are going to be kept pretty straightforward. Only one human has to die. Honestly, this is all I can really say before the spoilers start flooding in, so um, consider yourself warned. So sure, Ossip is younger and will probably be a very, very successful basketball player, but Kamal is a robotics engineer and loves violent action movies? Seems like a pretty obvious choice to me. Turns out taking the role of Manny the Office Reaper is a lot easier than expected. I could do this all day. Oh god. Why is it red? Um... I think someone stole my papers. Guess I'm letting everyone live then. You little f So to rewind for a sec, this game is all about choices. It's one of those games. Sometimes it's simple, and you can be pretty clinical with your decision on who's visiting the netherworld. Sure, why not Keiji and Alessandro? They're both retired and have lived full lives. But what about Darius? At night, he's hearing odd sounds and experiencing visions or something. He's clearly not having a good time, so I'm going to help him out. Other times, it can be a little more complicated. Okay, so six humans have to die, but at least three of them are required to have come from a scientific background, and two are required to be age 30 or younger. That doesn't leave you with a lot of wiggle room. Zara's an asteroid hunter, Nige's a geneticist, Lillian's a climate scientist, Ingold's under 30, Zachary's a glass bower. Uh, that's kinda scientific, I guess. See, he's wearing protective goggles. I remember those from science class. He's 29 anyway, but it pays to be thorough. Anson's a... sinner? Wait, four deadly sins? That's a contradiction. Oh well, in the bin you go with the rest of them. You're 22. Okay, so that leaves us with, oh, a grave robber and a mobster. That's comforting. The game was rigged from the start. Well, I'm sure Fate will have a comment or something to offer an explanation. He's usually pretty good at answering questions or at least commenting on your choices. I see you have marked the appropriate number of profiles. Yay. This corporate mandate is growing a bit tiresome. Oh well, what must be done? Yeah, fate changes throughout the course of this. Quite a lot, actually. Grim, uh, why are you here? Uh, let us get on with it. I see the exact amount of profiles necessary. Good job, I guess. Oh, right. The daily... Uh, should I become a writer? I could write many compelling works of fiction. I am an antique, after all. That is just... stupid. Ha ha, Grim. Jolly good. 
As you may have noticed, I am absent. I decided for a short vacation. Now, I must go submerge myself. Toodles, Grim. Why am I livid? So as it turns out, Fate isn't actually best pleased with the system he so frequently insists that you adhere to, to the point that he basically flat out mocks you for not going against the system. One might expect at least an inkling of rebellion. Does an autonomous personality hide anywhere within your skull? Wait, you want me to not follow the rules? I mean, I can do that, I guess. What's the worst that can happen? Okay, so the humans on the opposite end of the bundle have to die. Seems like a fairly innocuous quota. Fuck it. Fate wants me to be rebellious. I've got my trusty best newcomer reward to fall back on. Here we go. Ah, all the files are in order. Excellent work. Wait, you're not even going to acknowledge it? Not even a little bit? What have I been doing all this time? If you're not even going to comment on my efforts to be rebellious, then why bother? All the humans in the bottom row have to die. Maybe the game bugged out. I'll try again. Wait. Where was my daily report? I guess I got away with it again? What? What the fuck is going on? It's either bugging the hell out, or I'm seriously missing something here. You know what? Every profile has to die? Fuck it! I'm going full Angel Reaper now. You disappoint me. You cannot allow all to live. So as previously mentioned, this game is all about choices, every step of the way. And although I'm not going to detail each and every moment, my first playthrough was not what you could call successful. Everything is on fire, while ice invades from the polar zones. How did that even happen? <laughs> Shit. So Death and Taxes has multiple endings, and it's a relatively short game if I'm honest. You'll easily complete a playthrough in a couple of hours if you're uninterrupted. I'm going to come clean now and admit that everything you've actually seen up to this point has been from my first playthrough, and for my first I wanted to play things as straight laced as possible, only really breaking the rules and going against things when fate indicated he wanted me to. Turns out it's not nearly that simple a game. There are a lot of ways this can go down. My god, look at all these profile stats, prosperity, peace, health, and all of these change whether or not you choose to spare or kill the individual. It should be obvious by now that I didn't create this. Google offered me this. I am just a weary traveller staring wide-eyed into the void of 30 endings. I guess I'm going to be playing this a little more. So for my second playthrough, I decided to go full independence mode. The daily quotas, out the door! No more of that straight-laced Cole Phelps shit. It's time for job responsibility to take a holiday. You game plus? Yes please. Wait, this isn't the same intro as before. These were the ingredients chosen to make the perfect little grim. Did you just... Did you just pull a power puff? Yeah, 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 hurry up fate, I got me some soul judging to do. Wow, this desk is looking cluttered. Let's just put all this shit away. Yeah, this would probably be a good time to explain one of the game's peripherals. This is Mortimer, Death and Taxes in-game shopkeeper. He's fantastic. Everything you buy comes with a story. By Jones cover, the slimy appendage is still here. I shudder at that very memory. Did not know which way was Honestly, Mortimer easily stands as my favorite character of the game. There's nothing particularly notable about him. Pirate skeletons have been kicking around media for as long as I can remember. But every time he throws himself into a story, like a small child, I can't help but love it. Plus, now I have this, and that, and a hell globe, and a metal plant, and a... Wait. Oh. Oh. Well, I feel silly. So provided you've already doomed or spared a profile card, 
The lamp will then reveal the implicated effects of your decisions on the background plot, which you can mostly take note of through news notifications, fate himself, or your conscious, yes by the way you have a conscious, either encouraging or criticising your efforts. This approach pretty much rendered the daily quotas completely useless, and fate wasn't exactly happy about it when I overturned his evil plans to instead bring peace and prosperity to the world. Here I stand. Alone in the bright lights of my shattered life. I guess you could say that this ending constitutes as having won the game, but honestly you'd be missing out if you just stopped there. As I said before, there are a lot of ways this can go down, but I'm not going to spoil any more of them. Just be creative, think outside the box a little, and who knows? There seemed to be no end to the little things I was noticing as I continued playing. For one thing, the game is full to the brim with references and easter eggs, I've already shown a few, but trust me when I tell you that there are a lot. Atlantis, Matt Smith's Doctor Who, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Grim Fandango, Atlantis again, Alice in Wonderland, Terry Pratchett, Game of Thrones. Where did I place those papers, please? Where are you? So, bringing this colossal brain ramble to a close, I absolutely adore Death and Taxes. Sure, the gameplay, or to some lack thereof, is certainly repetitive by design, but the game's charm was so delightfully intoxicating that I couldn't help but love it the more I delved into it. There's such a remarkably vibrant personality throughout the game's hand-drawn art style, from the prominent uses of yellow and grey through to the art deco influences, it feels like a perfect combination of Beetlejuice meets Don't Starve, yet set in a 1950s office building. The voice cast is brilliant, with Douglas Pennant, Isaac Wells and Bonnie Bogovich all fully committed to bringing their assigned characters to life, Pennant in particular offering an excellently devious fate. Livid. As for Adam Bowe's soundtrack, imagine the most pleasant iteration of L.A. Noir you can think of in an elevator. With taxes. You can even buy a radio. This is nice. I could stay here. Honestly, most of this script was probably written alongside this soundtrack, sipping a bourbon whilst irritably remembering that I have to be up for work tomorrow. Oh well. It's only death and taxes. And after all... No, no. It is... Death and taxes. What else would it be?